Welcome to Market Week in Review for the week ending May 14th, 2021. I'm your host, Laura Bardwick. And today I'm joined by Senior Investment Strategist for the U.S., Paul Eidelman. Good morning, Paul. Thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, happy to be here. Thanks, Laura. Yeah. Um, so I was thinking today we could actually focus on just one topic. Um, inflation seems to be a bit of a buzzword these days. So I thought we could take the time and and really focus on uh, where inflation is today, level set the playing field before going into market outlook and or inflation outlook, and then finally market impacts from higher inflation. So if that all sounds good to you, let's go ahead and start off with um, level setting for investors. You know, what's in the numbers today? Uh, what should investors be looking at? Well, yeah. So this week we got both data on consumer price and producer price inflation in the United States. And the numbers were very large, uh, to put it bluntly. And um, I'll focus mostly on the consumer price data because I think that's the, the bigger watch point for investors. And the numbers were strong. It, they grew nine tenths month on month. And when you annualize that, you get a really big number. And, and just to put that in perspective, it was the strongest uh, sequential inflation reading in the United States since 1981. And um, whenever you get a number like that, you have to take it really seriously and, and try to figure out what's going on. And when we kind of dig under the surface of the inflation data this week, it looks like transitory issues are really dominating the story. And I'll give a couple of examples of that. The sort of strongest components of the inflation increase included things like automobiles. We know in the headlines that there's a lot of issues for car manufacturers being able to source semiconductors to produce their cars. That showed up in a big way with both used and new, new car prices increasing very significantly in the month of April. Um, and, and I think those kind of bottlenecks and shortage issues even though they may take several months to resolve, should over time go away just because there's a lot of profit incentive, both in the sort of semiconductor supply chain and for automobile manufacturers to try to produce more product at these elevated and more attractive prices to earn a, earn a good profit. So I think that component should prove transitory, even though it may take several months to work its, um, work its way through the system. A couple of other categories that I kind of lumped together would be what we saw both in airfare and hotel prices uh, in the data this week. Both of those jumped double digits. And in both cases for the airlines and hotels, those sectors of the economy had absolutely no pricing power during the coronavirus. Their business model got incredibly disrupted. They had no demand. And what we're seeing now with the economy aggressively reopening and people starting to travel again, those businesses are starting to get some pricing power again from an exceptionally low level. Um, and, and so that's inflation. But I, I, again, I think over time, once prices get back to a more normal level, we should see these really, really intense uh, price numbers on a month-on-month -month basis start to, to fade again. So when we kind of do the math, that's just a couple of examples. Uh, but when we do the math, these sort of, quote, transitory categories make up almost 80% of the increase in core inflation this month. And so that's ultimately where we're landing, that this is mostly driven by sort of short-term bottlenecks and issues that should uh, fade over the course of uh, 2021. Okay, so we're level setting after a crazy pandemic period. Yeah, yeah. So then what can we expect going forward? Well, yeah, I think um, as I alluded to, there's probably going to be a few more weird months. And that's because of these bottlenecks, uh, because of these shortages, because of these transitory effects as the economy is opening really aggressively. I think the next print uh, that we get for the month of May should look quite large as well. We also are still working our way through what uh, Chief Investment Strategist Eric Ristabin and I have been talking about for a while, which is this idea of base effects. So in March, April, and May of, of 2020, uh, we actually had deflation in the United States because of the intense lockdowns from the coronavirus. And that made a really low starting point for the inflation indices. And we're still comparing against those low numbers today. So that's, again, another factor sort of artificially boosting inflation in the short term, which will be with us again for the month of, of May. 
Um, but I think as we get into the second half of this year and into 2022, our expectation is that core inflation should start to come back down again to, to numbers that we're more familiar with looking at. So on a core PCE basis, personal consumption expenditures, that's the inflation measure that the Fed cares about. Right now, uh, we'll probably be looking at numbers closer to 3% for inflation. That's well above the Fed's target. I think as we get towards the end of this year, those numbers should be gravitating back down towards 2% and, and looking a lot less troublesome for investors and for the Fed uh, in terms of their monetary policy. So you did a great job laying out the effect of the market on inflation and folks opening back up who like hotels and airlines that were experiencing lower demand during uh, the worst of the pandemic. But what about the impact of these expected inflation changes on the market? Yeah, well, it, it's created volatility um, because this was just such a huge shock number. Uh, the first place it showed up was in Treasury yields. So we saw U.S. interest rates rise on the week because uh, obviously bonds with a fixed stream of cash flows, uh, inflation is a, a clear and, and present threat uh, for bond pricing. And uh, the Treasury market sold off. Uh, 10-year Treasury yields rose about seven basis points. And as of Friday morning, we're sitting around 1.65%. So a bit of pressure in, in bond markets. And, and that rippled into other asset classes as well and created volatility. Um, both for the U.S. and global equity market, we're seeing shares down roughly 2% on the week through Friday morning. And again, that's just what higher discount rates do to the, the current present value of, of future cash flows. Um, so the, the, the inflation surprise was a net negative for the equity market. But I'd say it looks like financial markets are gravitating more towards the conclusion we just talked about being uh, that this largely being driven by transitory factors because that sell off was a lot bigger uh, in the middle of the week when the news first came out. So we're starting to kind of claw our way back out of um, a more negative initial market response. Uh, and then the final area is showing up, which we talk about a lot as a focus for us in terms of where we're seeing opportunities is within the styles of the equity market. So uh, value securities versus growth securities, the, the growth area of the market, um, just in terms of what those businesses look like, tend to earn their cash flows farther out in the future. And so they're therefore, they're much more sensitive to these uh, discount rate dynamics. And so we saw growth stocks like uh, uh, the technology sector or the NASDAQ index sell off harder uh, during the inflation surprise and, and the rise in interest rates with value outperforming by roughly uh, 200 basis points on the week. So I think those are some of the features, definitely some volatility this week, but starting to diminish a little bit as we're recording here on Friday morning, as I think investors are gravitating more towards this idea of the inflation being transitory. Okay. So it sounds like a little bit of sticker shock and things going back to normal. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Well, that's actually a great note to end on. We have run out of our time for today. Paul, thank you so much for joining us and thank you all for joining us as well. We hope to see you next time and hope you have a great week in the meantime. Hi, I'm Eric Ristovan, Chief Investment Strategist for Russell Investments. If you like what you saw in this video and want to see more like it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel.